afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you're watching this, and thank you so much for tuning in and being faithful to supporting your church here on uh, 301 in Summerfield, in case you forgot where we are. A couple of quick announcements we want to share with you. Uh, August Mission, we have two more weeks to support uh, the Compassion International Fund, which uh, is used to support Luis in Ecuador, who's our child that we adopted many years ago. Uh, we appreciate your, your support this month. Also, I want to tell you that the beautiful flowers on the altar are there uh, in celebration. The, the ones in the vases are there in celebration of the 60th wedding anniversary of Gail and Carol Wigner. So happy anniversary uh, to my friends up in Michigan, Gail and Carol. Uh, we hope you have a happy day and many, many more years together. Uh, the beautiful uh, centerpiece on the altar uh, is there, uh, given by Jenny Clink uh, in memory and in honor of Bill Clink, for whom uh, funeral services, memorial services, uh, celebration of life were held yesterday. And uh, we want to thank everybody for your cards and notes and good wishes to Jenny and uh, support for her. Uh, it's, it's been a real blessing to her, and she wanted me to let you know how much she really appreciates it. We continue to have these wonderful concerts filling the time of uh, isolation in this pandemic. Uh, Billy's having her driveway concerts, and she's got lots of guests coming in. Kevin accompanies each week. We've got the skipper, and uh, we had uh, whoever, whoever, whoever shows up. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, or some of them might show up. Yeah, we don't want to do that, no. But anyway, we hope that uh, you'll take the time. Her address is in the phone book. It's 7 o'clock every Monday night. Uh, go over and, and enjoy. It's free. Uh, but if you want to take a canned good or something for the food pantry, you can do that. And coming up also, I know you were going to tell me. You, you did that to me last week. You just can't wait for me to plug this concert. I won't forget. I'm not as old as you. <laughs> well, you, you have a birthday coming up. I'll refer to that in a minute. <clears throat> But anyway, um, we will have a, uh, another concert coming up with Pinky at, uh, down at the, no, not at the Savannah Center, it's at the Sharon, and uh, it's on the 9th of October, and uh, you know her beautiful voice, and you know what a great job she does. Um, I will warn you ahead of time that Kevin is the music director, so uh, it, should, it should be a, an amazing evening. So uh, get a ticket. I think last time I counted there were like 20 tickets left. So uh, if you're going to get a ticket, you better get one really, really soon. Uh, it's um, it's going to be a great night. So please uh, support Pinky and Kevin and uh, go on out and, and have a good evening. The Organ Fund, I think we're down close to... $1,000 now that we owe. We're getting really, really close to, uh, to paying this off, and which is just an absolutely amazing thing to me that during this pandemic, uh, your generosity in helping us take care of this. And you'll hear Kevin playing it just a little bit later. You know, we, uh, we have a brick program that for if you donate $125, uh, you get to put a brick. And we have, I picked up the first brick, uh, this brick, You'll notice organ fund with the music notes, Kevin O'Connell. The very first brick is in honor of his eminence himself. And the reason we're doing this, and it, it, yes, well, the reason we did this is because everybody knows you're a brick short anyway. But anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a whole other story. Uh, we are uh, going to present this today to him because this Thursday, I believe it is, the 27th, is the 66th birthday of Mr. Kevin O'Connell. Billy, why don't you come over here and let's hold the brick up and have you sing and make him play for himself. Uh, <laughs> it's awful, you have to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kevin. Happy birthday to you. And, and, and many more. Okay. Gosh. And it's only 66. I mean, you're, you're like the youth group. What are we doing? Yeah. 
tell you. All right. Happy birthday, Kevin. And also, we want to uh, remind you that our Memorial Garden uh, continues to draw some interest from you folks, and uh, uh, we have a number of spots have already been spoken for. If you're interested, make sure you call the call church office and get your <laughs> reservation. I don't know what you would call it, I guess, uh, in for uh, the Memorial Garden. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We worship him together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Kevin O'Connell.
Thank you, Don. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. together. Heavenly Father, we join in prayer with our brothers and sisters around the world that we may grow close to you, our Father, and close to one another. We know that the prayers of righteous persons bring answers beyond belief. Therefore, make us righteous and worthy of being called the servants of God. In your holy name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Open my eyes that I might see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. 
place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now i wait for thee ready for thee my god to see open my eyes illumine me spirit divine open my eyes that i might hear voices of truth thou sendest clear and while the wave notes fall on my ear everything false will disappear silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my eyes illumine me warm truth everywhere open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my eyes illumine me Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Smiling God, you delight in your creation. You spread your palette of red and gold, purple and green for all to see. But we get caught up in speeding through life, intent on accomplishing more, yet somehow enjoying it less. Forgive us and renew us. Amen. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15 says, Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land and I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Here's a good old hymn that I'm sure most of you know, so sing right into your televisions. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and grief to bear And what a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer trials and temptations is there trouble everywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer 
Can we find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrows share Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer. I pray in the Spirit on all occasions, all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Let us pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we come to you reaching out for patience to endure the perplexing sickness that seems to be gripping our world. We come to you asking for peace and our nation, that you calm the streets, that you calm hearts and minds, that you bring about the justice and the peace that people seek. We pray, Heavenly Father, for, for our church, for it is so difficult not to be together with one another, and it is so hard to know what to do to avoid putting people at risk and seeing people sick. We need you, Heavenly Father, to, to come and make sense of the senseless. We come and ask you to help us to understand that which seems not to have any answers. We need you. We need you perhaps more than we have ever realized that we needed you before. We pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, either from the COVID-19 or just from all the other things that still vex our humanity and rack our bodies. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to guide and direct us to keep our hearts stayed on the teachings of your Son, to understand that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. It is through him that we will survive, we will persevere, and we will come out of this even better than before. You have never failed to lead us, to direct us, to watch over us. And we have no reason to expect that you have left us now. We pray today, Heavenly Father, for those that are part of our church family who are going through tough times. We continue to pray, Heavenly Father, for Nancy Doggett as she battles her cancer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for Ken Ralph, who is now in hospice care and needs your strength, and for his dear wife, Alice. We pray for all those, Heavenly Father, who are going through difficulties, sicknesses, injuries, who need a special touch from you today. We know that you are able. We know that your Holy Spirit is the source and the power. And so we pray it down upon each one, simply for their asking. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless what we have to do here today, that not only will we be able to be pleasing in your sight, but that those who watch, whether part of our church family or others on Facebook or the Internet, might hear the cry of our heart, that they might understand the desire that we have that you would shine, that you would take first place, that you would provide for them a way. Heavenly Father, in faith we pray these things. We pray them in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Friend, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. scripture reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. Jesus knew the proud religious law keepers had heard he was making and baptizing more followers than John. Jesus did not baptize anyone himself, but his followers did. Then Jesus went from the country of Judea to the country of Galilee. He had to go through the country of Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. It was near the piece of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus was tired from traveling, so he sat down, just as he was, by the well. It was about noon. A woman from Samaria came to get water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His followers had gone to the town to buy food. The woman of Samaria said to him, You are a Jew. I am of Samaria. Why do you ask me for a drink, 
when the Jews have done have nothing to do with the people of Samaria. Jesus said to her, You do not know what God has to give. You do not know who said to you, Give me a drink. If you knew, you would have asked him. He would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, the well is deep. You have nothing to get water with. Where will you get the living water? Are you greater than our early father, Jacob? He gave us the well. He and his children and his cattle drank from it. Jesus said to her, Whoever drinks this water will be thirsty again. Whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty. The water that I will give him will become in him a well of life that lasts forever. Here ends our readings for today. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Kevin. In the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. I take you back to the summer of 1964. Before, the year before, the summer before, my senior year in high school. I was looking for a job. I was always looking for jobs. My friend and I uh, used to mow lawns, wash dogs, wash cars, whatever. As a matter of fact, at one time we, we printed up a uh, half sheet of paper when we took it to the printer, and the printer printed them up back in that day. And it said, don't be a jerk, let us do the work. And it had a whole list of all the stuff we'd do and what our little rates were for, for them or a call for a price, and we'd come out and tell you. 
We never were without some money in our jeans when we had the Reading Fair and uh, our friends couldn't go because they didn't have any money for a ticket. We had money for a ticket because we worked. Sometimes they would go fishing or they'd go down to the creek and build a fort and we couldn't go because we had jobs to do. Well, one of those jobs was working at the Sinking Springs Drive-In Theater snack bar. It was one of the eye-opening experiences of my culinary career. Went to this place and they trained us on how to hold on to the popcorn that was left from last night and mix it in with the new popcorn that was made for tonight so that the stale popcorn and the new popcorn kind of covered for each other. And then the most disgusting thing of all was we had these things called, uh, well, they, they were sort of like you buy at the, at the Chinese restaurant, an egg roll. And I forget exactly what they called them, but they were, they were egg rolls. And the owner came and he told us to go into the freezer, into the, ref the refrigerated unit, and, and get out these, these egg rolls. So we got the egg rolls out and, and we opened the box, and they were moldy. Thank you. And so I said to the man, well, these don't look right and they don't smell right. What shall we do? He said, drop them into the deep fryer and cook them and no one will ever know the difference. Yeah, exactly. Well, working at that snack bar was not my dream job of all time and it was so miserable that I've never forgotten it. But one of the things I do remember about snack bar work was up on the screen at the drive-in movie, prior to the beginning of the film, they would always tell you the snack bar will close in 10 minutes. The snack bar will close in 8 minutes. The snack bar will close in 5 minutes. And you know, there was this amazing phenomena that as that countdown took place, more and more people would come running down to the snack bar for a drink. Because on the picture on the screen was this frosty looking bubbling Coca-Cola with ice cubes out of the top of the glass and frost on the side. And just to look at it made you thirsty. And the closer you got to the movie time, five minutes away, with not much time to get all the way down to the snack bar and get back to your car, the thirstier you got. Somehow that, that call to get down there and get that last minute drink to, to quench your thirst was an amazing source of revenue for that creep that used to put the moldy things in the fryer. Yeah. The closer to a, a, a program or a movie, the, the thirstier you got. Well, I'm convinced that you and I are going through something similar to that. We're, we're being told that Sooner or later, this pandemic is going to be over. Sooner or later, they're going to come up with the, the cure or the vaccine or, or something that will allow us to get, to get back together again. And we're getting thirsty. We're getting thirsty for that time when we can go back to the way things used to be. I'm not convinced that's ever going to happen exactly that way, but... At least we may be free from being quarantined or held in our homes for 14 days. You know what it's like to, to own a business and, and, uh, or to, to uh, work at a job and, and wait for your paycheck. Well, that's what's happening to some people who own businesses now all across the country. Speaking of, speaking of people who are thirsty... You see that every night on the news. The bar owners in Orlando are on the Orlando news every night wanting to reopen their bars because people are thirsty for the beverage, but they're also thirsty for the camaraderie and the fellowship and of getting together, of just getting out and being together again. And they want that, that state approval to be able to 
open their doors and allow the watering holes and the bars and the nightclubs to, to reopen. It's a hard thing for those people who own those businesses to survive and some of them are not. Some of them are not able to keep going. I can imagine what it must have been like in the 1930s during, during Prohibition. Can you imagine that? I, I, I guess that if you went out on the corner of any major city in America and you stood on the corner and you yelled at the top of your lungs, the bar will open in five minutes, you could have started a stampede. I mean, there was all sorts of illegal activity and legal wrangling going on to, to provide beverages to quench the thirst of a nation that had been told they weren't allowed to drink anymore. People are looking for something that will, will quench their thirst. If you live in the villages or somewhere around, you know that in the town squares of the villages there are kiosks on the corners, and they line up because I guess they're thirsty. And when they line up, they're, they're convinced that they have to get that drink and get back for the next part of the program, for the next singer or for the next song. And there's a, there's a thirst that drives them to need and to want that drink. Sometimes we thirst for the wrong things. Sometimes we thirst for physical things that do not satisfy, do not quench our thirst, leave us wanting more. And unfortunately, there's never enough. That's why one of the, one of the most sought-after groups in our area is Alcoholics Anonymous. Because too many people are thirsty for the wrong things. It's a physical phenomenon, but in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual world, there is a, a similar phenomenon, a, a thirst for spiritual things, for something to satisfy the, the yearning for God that is in us. We're also experiencing that during this pandemic. We're experiencing the fact that we cannot worship together, we cannot sing together, we cannot be part of the fellowship and camaraderie of, of God's house together. It's a hard time, and, and I hear it from a lot of people, they thirst for that time again. The Bible talks about this thirsting for God, this thirsting for spiritual things in the writings of the psalmist. In the 42nd Psalm, it says, and, and I love the picture language here, as the deer pants for the water's brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the river. And from the heights of Hermon, the snow-capped mountain. And from the hill of Mazar, deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All the waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. The psalmist is, is experiencing a thirst. And it's not a thirst for for a glass of water. It isn't a thirst for that ice-cold Coca-Cola. It's a thirst for the God who created them, who motivates and drives them, who empowers them. That thirst that the psalmist writes about for the nation of Israel is really a picture or a type of the thirst, the spiritual thirst, that is built into every single human being, particularly every single believer. There's an old gospel song that, that also communicates this same thirst. It's called Drinking at the Springs of Living Water. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame, and nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. And the chorus goes, drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, a wonderful and bountiful supply. You and I are in a time where it seems kind of dry and arid. And life almost becomes 
tasteless. And we, we yearn, we want so desperately to get our life back. We want so desperately for this, this pandemic thing to go away. Many of us want so desperately for it to be November 15th so the election goes away. We don't want the, the turmoil and the angst and the anger and the sickness and all of this awful feeling that comes over us. Jesus goes to the well of Jacob in the scripture that you heard this morning. And at that well, he encounters a woman, a, a Samaritan woman. Now talk about racial imbalance and talk about racial prejudice. Many people in our day and in our country think that we have invented this. This has gone on for millennia, probably since the beginning of time. And so Jesus comes across a woman of a a different faith, of a different background, of a different ethnicity. And he asks of her a drink of water. It would be paramount or, or similar to coming to Florida in the 1950s and going to a public place and seeing two water fountains, one that says colored and the other that says white. Whites would not drink from the colored and colored would not drink from the whites. No, but Jesus and this Samaritan woman, it's the same thing. It's the same separation, the same suspicion, the same inability to cope with differences. And Jesus tells her how to break it down. Jesus shows us through her how you stop all of this. You stop concentrating on the sign that says five minutes and the snack bar closes. You stop concentrating on the, the evil of this world and the sickness and all of the negativity. And you start concentrating on him. You put your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So when the Samaritan woman comes to draw the water, Jesus says to her, Will you give me a drink? Will, will you accept people not like you? Will you care for people who have need, who are different than you? Will you break down the walls instead of building new ones? Will you have faith that God, who created everything and who got us through 200 years of American history, is, is able to solve this and keep us moving forward, even if it's different? Will you believe in him? Will you believe in, in the experiment that is this country? Will you believe in yourself enough to break it down? Will you give me a drink, Jesus says. And the Samaritan woman says, wait a minute, I'm a, I, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. We're different. We've got separation. She's, she's saying, wait a minute, we've got, we've got uh, colored water fountains and we've got black water fountains and we've got black churches and we've got white churches and we've got uh, the inability to have any kind of concentration uh, of, of programs or or organizations that have to do with white, but we can have uh, the Black Entertainment Network and we can have the United Negro College Fund. What is this racism, this separation, this inability to drink from the same well? Racism is not white against black or black against white. It's human beings against human beings. It's thirsty people who just need a drink of water, who need to be satisfied. Will we let them be satisfied? Will you give me a drink? And we don't need to react, but I'm different. But you're different. I don't know. Should we drink together? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Living water. In other words, you'll have a drink and you'll be thirsty again. 
you'll see that sign and it'll say the snack bar closes in five minutes and you'll scamper on down there and you'll get your ice cold Coca-Cola and you'll come back to your car and you'll guzzle that puppy down and it'll be gone and by the time intermission comes especially if you bought our delicious popcorn you'll be thirsty again and after the movie is over you'll need to stop on the way home and have another drink because you'll be thirsty again but what Jesus says if you straighten this whole mess out it won't just keep happening over and over and over again the the water that I will give you he says is living water it's the whole answer it's the power of God everyone who drinks of this water Jesus says will be thirsty again but whoever drinks of the water I give them will never thirst indeed the water I give them will become to them springs of living water welling up to eternal life where else in the Bible do we see somebody getting thirsty in the story of the crucifixion of our Lord one of the seven last words of Christ I thirst I thirst now do you think that Jesus was you know after his beating and after marching through the streets and after being nailed to the cross you think that he was physically thirsty of course he was but not only was he physically thirsty he was thirsty for his father later he'll say why have you forsaken me I thirst was a, a physical thirst but it was also a spiritual thirst for Jesus Jesus was bringing it all together on that cross he was teaching us even in his pain and in his suffering and his anguish we can almost hear that scripture that we read in the beginning my soul thirsts for God for the living God when shall I come and appear before God must have run through Jesus's mind and his heart in your darkest moments in your crucifixion time when you are hurting and you are in anguish when you don't understand and it seems like all has come against you which is what Jesus was going through he was taking the sin of humanity he was becoming fully human in that moment he was thirsting like you and I thirst not just physically but for God himself when you really feel thirsty are you understanding what it is you need mother Teresa was very emphatic about and, and just put a lot of emphasis about the thirsting of Christ and our thirsting after him and on the walls of all of the missionaries of charity facilities all over Calcutta and all over the world matter of fact we support one of Mother Teresa's missionaries of charity work in Jenkins Kentucky every Christmas time on the walls of all of those facilities are the words I thirst I thirst and Mother Teresa said this I thirst is something much deeper than Jesus just saying I love you until you know deep inside that Jesus thirsts for you you can't begin to know who he wants to be for you or who he wants you to be for him you must thirst for him I thirst for God for the living God you must forget about lining up at the kiosk forget about the sign flashing five more minutes till the snack bar closes forget about what you think will quench your thirst physically and realize that what we need in this day more than ever before perhaps in our lives is we need that thing that satisfies forever we need Jesus Christ to quench our thirst for him and for his father don't you think there are just millions of people all over the world right now who just think if the if the snack bar would open 
if the corner bar would be allowed to open, if the schools would be allowed to open, if church would go back to being the way it used to be, if my neighborhood could get out and have their parties and, and be close together again, it would all be different. Not really. You won't find lasting satisfaction in Coors Light or in Heineken or even in Guinness. Hard for an Irishman to say. The answer is in springs of living water. Not bottled water, not Perrier, but springs of living water. Jesus answered the woman at the well, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. All you'll be is thirsty again for another drink. In these dark times, we need to come to the light in this time when the world thirsts for answers, we need to come to the living water. Whoever drinks of the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I'm not a doom and gloom advocate, but I believe this. Sooner or later, there's going to come in your life and mine a time when we may not be sitting in our car with the little thing hanging in our window for sound for the movie. We may be driving down the street. We may be laying in our bed. We may be walking in the backyard. And all of a sudden, the good Lord will say to us, your life will close in five minutes. It'll all be over in five minutes. And you'll be thirsty, but will you know for what? What will quench your thirst in that moment in time? When time has come close to being at an end, what will quench your thirst? The world we live in sort of screams out to us, this could all be over in five minutes in a world of nation against nation and nuclear missiles and, and power and satellites that can destroy in outer space and, and uh, uh, this sickness and this pandemic. Are you banking on the fact that they'll come up with a cure? This water, you drink it, you'll be thirsty again. This pandemic, we cure it and you'll be sick again. Find a cure, find a vaccine, find a solution that will last forever. Find him. Find him. This might be your moment to reach out to him, to enjoy a glass of that spring of living water that wells up to eternal life that no one can take from you and that you'll never get thirsty again. The snack bar may close in five minutes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God who loves us in spite of ourselves. You are the God who has provided for us every step along the way. When we have gone off on our own and thought that we had the answers, we have often fallen on our face and found out we didn't need, know near as much as we thought we did. We need the spring of living water. We need your son to teach us and direct us and satisfy us. We need the answer that comes only through knowing you and trusting in you and walking in you by faith. And if we have that, then no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In his name we pray. Amen. Again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through just like you 
always do till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away so will you please say hello to the folks that I know tell them I won't be long they'll be happy to know that as you saw me go I was singing this song we'll meet again don't know where don't know when but I know we'll meet again some sunny May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forever. Amen. Thanks so much for watching.